Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Now, we've had pre-filled liquid coolers for a long time, but it's been a while since we've seen an evolution like this. The H80 and the H100 are gone. They are replaced with the H80i and the H100i, which take the idea of controlling and cooling your PC to a whole new level. The older products that are being replaced were already class leading. The H80 was about as good as it gets for a single 120mm radiator pre-done liquid cooler and the H100 was about as good as it got for its entire lifespan due to its dual 120mm radiator design. So let's have a look at what has actually improved versus the last generation products. We're using similar radiator designs, but Corsair has amped up a few things. So number one is they are using 3 8 inch tubing versus the 1 quarter inch tubing in the previous generation. Next up is the dramatically improved mounting mechanism. Instead of fussing about with screws or latches or anything like that, it uses a simple magnet it hold down. All you have to do is put it in approximately the right position and it clicks into place. It includes an AMD and an Intel bracket depending on which you prefer. They've also included their new fan designs. These are based on their SP series fans that are available for purchase separately but with a couple of things toned down so they don't have the rubber grommets in the corners and they don't have the replaceable rings but in terms of the performance these are right up there with their premium fans that are available separately. Also, Corsair Link is a huge improvement. So simply by plugging in a USB cable to the block itself, you can link it up to your system and monitor water temperatures as well as fan speeds and you can even set custom curves not only for the fans that are connected directly to your water cooler but also other system fans if you desire. The biggest special sauce doesn't come from the hardware though, but rather from the software. This is the Corsair Link 2 interface because we have a very Corsair out machine here. There's all kinds of cool stuff we can do, including seeing in real time the efficiency of the power supply, the temperature of the power supply, but we're more focused on what we can do with the fans and the coolers right now. So you can individually monitor the Intel CPU temperature and the liquid temperature. This could help you with diagnosis. For example, if your CPU temperature was very high, but your liquid temperature was actually quite low, then you'd know that maybe there was a problem with your fan, for example. However, Link doesn't even make you think that much because it's going to tell you right within the interface what RPM the fans hooked up directly to the H100i are running at. So in this case, we've got both fans running at around 1200 RPM right now because we have it in the quiet profile, which we'll be proving a point with because the CPU is overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz when we show you the performance of the cooler. You don't have to adjust them individually though. You can set up groups and once you've configured fans as a group, you can set any number of different modes, balanced performance, custom, fixed RPM, fixed percentage, or even using the custom mode to create different points on the curve. So as temperatures change and you can configure which temperature you care about, you can have the fans ramp up or ramp down in the way that you deem to be most appropriate. You can see a graph as well of all the different temperatures and, well, RPMs or whatever else you pretty much want that is updated in real time. And last but not least, you can configure it to show temperatures in Celsius or Fahrenheit, to run at Windows startup, or to start minimized to the tray. Pretty much, if you've got a link compatible device, you should pretty much be running it at all times because it does a great job of monitoring your system and it can even send you email notifications if something goes wrong. So guys, after some frantic CPU cooler swapping about, we have collected results with a 4.4 gigahertz 3570K, all right? With the H100i running in just pull, so just two fans, the H80i running in push-pull, which is its stock configuration, and the stock default Intel cooler, which is very weak, and as you will see, not recommended at all for overclocking. So the H100i gave us a CPU temperature of 60 degrees under 100% load. And here's an audio sample showing you what the system sounded like from the rear corner here, so not directly in the path of the airflow. The H80i gave us a reading of 70 degrees, so it doesn't perform as well as the H100i, but has the advantage of being compatible with a wider variety of cases. And here's our audio clip.
And last but not least, the, the Intel fan did not hold up to the challenge at all. We reached 100 degrees on the CPU, which is where a 3570K will begin thermal throttling and will just not work at all and is just not, just bad news. Don't overclock with your stock CPU cooler. Here's the audio clip. And I hope this episode has been an important lesson to you for why using an all self-contained liquid cooling solution is way better for overclocking than using a stock one. Thanks for watching NCIX Tech Tips, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.